This is Mandatory Listening, a podcast about the what's, why's, and how's of effective practical leadership shared by successful leaders and by your host, Dan Mann. Well, good morning. Welcome to Mandatory Listening. How are you doing, Kent? Doing well. How are you? Well, I'm having some uh, new coffee with my new diet, butter. Well, there you go. Butter coffee. Stuck Sticks of butter lead to good health. Well, we'll talk about that on another podcast. <laughs> I think what uh, what brought this around was our, our coffee, our breakfast conversation this morning about the nature of customer service. Uh-huh. I'm just going to set the stage. So um, there's there's a there's a concept that we have at the Man Group, which is vastly different than a lot of other concepts, which is that the actual service experience delivered by people has a tremendous impact on business. In, in retail or in most any other exchange. And we could even go another layer further and say that it is understated, the customer service experience and its effect on money. money. You know, monetary gain at the company is, is grossly understated and, and, the, and its ability to be impacted by customer service. Agreed. So the, the store layout, the product itself, the... The price. Ro- the price, the relationship between only the store side is the only thing that matters within the first six months of a, of a retail operation. Yep. So the focus tends to be on the sexy things, building the store, having a cool in-store design, the logo, the marketing, what product it is, and of course, what price the product is. Yeah. And those are the big drivers for a biz- for business success. And it seems like the companies that, that fail are the ones that kind of make it through that initial boom. They have maybe have a great opening day. It's a beautiful store. People are talking about it. But it, it sifts through the filter, the companies that, that invest in this. Because, you know, you walk into a store that, I mean, there's a dozen examples I can think of. I'm not going to name any names. But where you walk in and it's a beautiful store, but there's no activity. There's no one in the store. Yeah, absolutely. And what happens is that I think customers... Um, believe say they believe that it's important and they talk about the best service in town and yet the inconsistency or the lack of focus at certain times means that the net result of that is 40 or 50 percent of the time you're not getting a good interaction with a person yeah and I think our contention is that that interaction directly affects your sales results right and I don't hear enough people talking about that well and and to say it directly, it directly impacts your money and, and the way that your business is going to operate in the future and sustainability. Most people would argue there's no correlation, which is an issue, right? That changing your customer service strategy will have no impact on your business. Well, look at, look at the success Amazon has. This is, a, this is the equation that everyone seems to be focused on these days. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm at home. I'm alone. I've got my laptop open and I'm shopping. Yep. I'm making buying decisions entirely based on pictures based on, you know, uh, endorsements of other users and, of course, price and how quickly I can get it. Yep. There's absolutely no personal interaction. In fact, I'm not sure if you can even call someone mm-hmm. at Amazon and talk to them. Yeah. So when that's the prominent, at least that's what people talk about as the prominent methodology for buying things these days, it's hard to make the case that a personal interaction and the people that engage with you can make a successful business. It's hard to make the case otherwise. Yeah, I just thought about this actually. The the customer experience, when you go to a store, especially in your, in your hometown, you have stores that you frequent probably regularly and then there's stores that you probably have never gone to after the first time. And this is a personal experience because you know, you know, your area, you know, with the stores within your general vicinity that you regular. But a lot of times I hear this, this thing that's like, oh yeah, I don't go there. They have bad service or they don't have good service. And it's almost tough to quantify for a lot of people what makes it a bad service. And so you could, you know, what we like to do, of course, you know, in everything we do is ask, you know, if we're just in conversation with someone, oh, they you don't go there anymore because they have bad service, what specifically did they do? And so I think subliminally we all understand this idea of service, but it has somehow become diluted or hard to grasp. It's like a it's like a chasing a rabbit down a hole. What is this idea that is good service and how do you make it custom to your business? How do you make it so it's authentic? And that's really what we're excited about and we are 
uh, believe is a lot more important than than people think. Because it's hard to define. Uh, folks don't train on it. Mm-hmm. Folks don't uh, de- define it and describe it as the, the methodology. They just say we offer great service, and then that's left to everyone to come up with their own interpretation. And it's an assumption that, oh yeah, we have great service because we've got our head on our shoulders and we hire good people and we don't have to train them because their personality is good. And I think that we challenge that almost harder than anything else, that just because you ask a broad question in the interview, like, what do you feel the customer service should be? It's just, it's a trap, setting a trap for yourself where you think that your people would never do anything to hurt your business, directly or indirectly. Well, here's what I think, and at the bottom line, you know, at, at the bottom line here, I think for the vast majority of public service companies, whether it's a retail business or a grocery store or anywhere where you hire people to deliver this experience, because that's so unvalued in the business community, those people are paid the lowest. So you got the marketing department, of course, they're making a lot of money. Oh, yeah. You've got the owners, they're making a lot of money. And you've got, you know, some degree of management, they're salaried with a bonus opportunity. But the folks at the front line who are day in and day out talking to your customers, those are usually the most underpaid and therefore generally most stressed yep. and most dissatisfied people who, as a result, deliver this terrible experience. And, and so until the company can make it a priority. The people at the front line are the most important people in our business for delivering customer service. And then reward those people accordingly with good benefits and compensation. This cycle of negative in customer service experience is going to continue. Right. And, what I mean, we could even unwrap that a little bit. Let's talk about how a customer service experience hurts your business. Let's talk specifically. Just give me one example of how a bad customer experience can hurt your business. So I went to uh, my, my local grocery store in the last 10 days. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll go ahead and say it. It's Ingalls. So I go to Ingalls, which is the, you know, the regional grocery store chain. I'm looking for wings because it's wing night. Yeah. Tommy want wingy. Tommy want wingy. I want wingy. So I'm going so- to get some wings tonight. So I go to the back where the poultry is. I look around. There are, there are no wings that I can find. So there's a guy out there who's working there. He's got a white apron on. He's got a cart, and he's putting product out. And I walked over and said, excuse me, do you guys have any wings? He says, we don't have any wings. Okay, are you you going to get any wings? He didn't answer. I said, will you guys be, are there any wings in the back? He didn't answer. So I had a grocery cart that already had the carrots and the ranch dressing and a few other things in it. I left that cart right there where he is standing and walked out. I walked across the street to Publix, and I spent $35 on wings and other groceries. That may or may not be, you know, a deal breaker to Ingalls. Yeah. But let's just say that happened 10 times today that day. yeah. with this guy. Let's say that employee had 10 interactions in which $35 left that store and went across the street. $350 they didn't get. $350 that Publix did get. And let's do that. How many times do you think he works every every two weeks? Yeah. You know, let's say he's on shift eight, ten times. Times 350, ultimately we're in the thousands of dollars of loss to a business. That's just one small example. Yeah. And do you think that ten people a day do that? I think this guy inter- potentially interacts with as many as 25 or 30 people a day. Mm-hmm. And if he's bad half the time or 25% of the time... And I can assign a $35 loss to that yep. every time. Now it's quantifiable. Of course. It's not just it feels bad. It's like you lost that sale. And in fact, here's what's going to happen. When I think about going to get in wings again the next night, it's Tommy Want Wingy night. <laughs> well, I'm not, Sorry, going, I'm not going to Ingles. Yeah. It's a memory I have. Here it is. It's Ten days later, I still have that memory. And, and here's an... I've got I've got two points to say to that. I would I would say one, people listening to this are gonna say, Oh, I would never leave a store after having a bad experience at a grocery store. And the, although that Dan, that's not a good example. Okay. Well, do you think that if you're not someone who's gonna leave a store after a bad experience like that, do you think that just out of the necessity for getting exactly what you want for dinner, that's enough to make you leave the store, whether or not the guy had bad had a bad attitude towards you, but let's say, for example, let's let's rewind it back. Let's I'll be the I'll be the uh, the employee. 
no, we don't, no, sir, we don't have chicken wings. Uh, but what we do have is A, B, or C. And here's an alternative that maybe can make your chicken wing night into something that is different, but also just as good. That's a perfect example, and I'll bring that to a story if I if I can give another story. Mm-hmm. I'm looking for um, uh, I'm looking for uh, irises for for Leslie. She likes she is it iris or is, no? It's the uh, stargazer yeah, lilies. Yeah, yeah. Stargazer lilies for Leslie. And so I go to the I go to the flower shop and I said, Do you guys have any any um, stargazer lilies? And she said, Who's it for? And I said, What's well, for Leslie? She it's her favorite it's her favorite flower. She's my, she's my partner, and I want to get her some, some stargazers. And she goes, that's really nice. Good for you. She said, uh, has she ever seen a, a calla lily? And I said, what's a calla lily? And she walks me over to the, to the refrigerated section where the, where the flowers were, pulls out these beautiful lilies and says, this is something new that we've gotten in that are really nice. And I go, those are beautiful. Yeah, let me, let me do a few of those. So she wraps me up some calla lilies. I walk out to my car. I sit in the car. I start it out and I go, oh. She did not have any stargazer lilies. <laughs> so in just just an interest in the interest of serving me, rather than saying no to me and rather than being, you know, difficult, she was polite, she was respectful, she was enthused. Oh, who let's get you some flowers. What about the cattle lily? And my experience was positive. Now I could have been a difficult customer who only wanted the stargazers. Mm-hmm. And and I could have possibly perceived her as being insincere. Well, who's it for? Well, don't you don't need to ask me who it's for. I just want the damn stargazers. Yeah, you know I could have been that kind of customer, but I would make the case that most of us are probably susceptible to an engaging person who's polite and respectful and interested in helping. We don't have any wings. I'm sorry, we're out. We won't get them again until tomorrow. What are you doing? You're grilling tonight. Who are you who are you feeding? And next thing you know, they may have suggested an alternative that I would have been very happy with. And if you're not willing and able to do that in as a as an employee of a store like that why are you in business if you don't have the capacity to engage with someone at the risk of them not wanting to talk to you okay they made the choice to leave their house and come to your store it's not going to be the worst thing in the world if you say hi to them and ask them a question well it just tells me that you're well treated by this company it tells me that you like your job you're probably giving a level of attention and focus to your work. You take pride in your work, yeah. and therefore the end product is well done. You've carefully considered the meat that you're putting out today. You've done a good job of packaging it. Right. You're not hiding bad product underneath the you know the top There's layer. There's no bad tactics there. That's right. Hey, here's my product. I'm proud of it. Ask me any questions about it, and I can answer it for you. I mean, we we rant and and talk about you know the butcher shop, you know. And, and I wanted to go back to that. It was my second point, uh, talking about the grocery store example. My experience has been, and I know through through anecdotes, uh, a lot of people experience or experiences are similar to mine. Is that let's say you go to a grocery store, your normal grocery store, and you have an indifferent experience. So let's go back. Let's say you didn't have a bad experience, just a generic, just a generic experience. You went to the grocery store. I think our argument, and definitely my argument, is that a good experience, not even a great, not even the best experience, a good experience would make you transfer over from a generic experience. You had a neutral experience, right? And then you have a good one. I would argue that you would prefer the good experience over the indifferent one, even at a grocery store level. And and so a good experience that's your competition, say a good experience is your competition and you're a generic experience, you're getting beat by that. Well, let's take this even specific to you because I know you're an advocate of the local chop shop, yeah, which yeah. which is a butcher shop. Yeah. So we're buying meats. We've got a two mile drive to a grocery store. Yep. To buy meats, that's convenient. I'm a customer. I don't mind it. Right. Or I go to the Ingles and have a bad experience, and so I go across the street to to Publix, and now I continue to shop at Publix because now I'm a little more loyal yep. to a more reliable experience. But you've actually taken it to the next level. You're actually an advocate of the chop shop. You would make a case, no, 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 we're not going there. Yeah. Because I like these guys at the chop shop. You actually, you've gone beyond just, it's not a bad experience. It's a pretty good experience. Yeah. Somewhat loyal to one brand. You're actually actually out there touting how great it is, and you want other people to go there. Yeah. Well, let's make it, let's make it real. Okay, so here's the bottom level generic grocery store. 
okay, you get in and you find exactly what you need, which you found online before you went to the grocery store. Okay, so you've got a list and you're looking for things. Let's go next level up. Okay, so we found most of what we needed, but maybe we need one alternative. And so you turn to a customer service experience or a customer service employee okay. and say, hey, I need this. Or maybe someone offers a suggestion or whatever. You have a good experience. So take it to the next level. Let's let's ask you what you're doing tonight for for dinner. Uh, you know, let's give you a spread of options. How many people are you feeding? How many people are you feeding? How are you going to cook it? What are you cooking it on? Are you grilling? What kind of grill do you have? And these kind of questions, one, they're not that difficult, and two, they completely take your customer by surprise. It's not difficult. It's and, not difficult. And that and it's just a seemingly unheard of definition to this customer experience thing. Yep. Um, I think we're making the case, Ken, that, that, that as a company, not enough retailers, not enough service uh, businesses think this way. Yeah. Uh, people say it. People don't execute on it. Mm-hmm. And, and what we believe is that this behavior actually improves sales, actually drives profitability, and ultimately... This is really kind of a, a big thing here, make the full circle. It retains staff. Mm-hmm. It does retain customers, and it motivates people to want to stay and become part of your team. So if you're a company that can't, quote, can't find good help, yeah, take a hard look at the investment you're making in their day-to-day life. Are they enjoying their life? Are they passionate about the product? Are they passionate about those customers? And are they themselves satisfied in the work? Because if not... They're delivering a bad experience, you're losing customers, and you can't figure out why this cycle can't be broken. Right. And I know people from my retail experience, when someone, when a customer would walk in the store, it's not excitement, it's not enthusiasm. I mean, if you're, if you're working at a, a specialty retail location, it should be enthusiasm when someone walks in the store. Because if you're selling outdoor gear, you're selling running shoes, you're selling... You know, bikes. You're trying to get someone into a new into a new sport. You know, that's that's your goal, right? To help the community, or at least that's what they advertise. And I've noticed in my retail experience that when you know certain certain employees, when a customer walks in the store, it's fear. It is. It's fear. It's anxiety. It's I'm running into the back room. I'm going to make a loop. I'm going to talk to the boss. It's anything they can do to not talk to the customer. Because this employee is either not engaged uh, mentally, not engaged with their passion, or yeah. they're underpaid and right. they're stressed and worried about their other job right. that they have to have to make ends meet. Yeah. And the net result of that is your customers uh, being badly treated. Yeah. And it's it's treating these specialty uh, enthusiastic employees and turning them into a commodity. It's turning them into a McDonald's employee. <laughs> And that just feels like the lowest level of part-time engagement. Right. Probably very good people, but just no motivation or inspiration to the job. So let's let's bring this to a close because this is something we're going to be talking about yeah, in, yeah. in the coming podcasts. So the message is really you know is really simple. If I'm a retail owner or a business owner, and I've, I've decided as a result of this podcast, miraculously, wow, I see this in a new <laughs> way. Is step one to define what the custom, good quality customer experience looks like in specific actions and specific behaviors and define it more succinctly? Well, for sure. If you don't have a, a meeting or a open dialogue with the people that are 90% of the front part of your business, your, your Salesforce associates, if you're not having a conversation with them or at least some way for them to, to tell you what's going on or if you're not you know, clearly seeing it, yeah. You have to have a strategy around this. It's not just a, it's not a tactic. It's not just a conversation. It's a strategy. Yeah. And I think the word strategy obviously gets thrown around pretty commonly these days, but a strategy is specific. It's, it's attainable. It's a goal. It has, it has things wrapped up in it that's not just a talk. It's measurable. Right. Yeah. So, so and I'm thinking about the chop shop guys again. These guys... You know, they probably were hired because of their expertise as, as butchers yeah. and their ability to understand, you know, meat. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? You'd make, I'd make the case that the first thing I see with them is their friendliness. Right. It's their engagement. I walk in the door, they're calling me by name. Yeah. If they're not calling me by name, they're pointing at me, waving at me, saying, I'll be with you in just a second. Yep. Welcome. Come on in. So it's their personal, it's their personality. Yeah. It's their, it's their understanding that welcoming people and having them feel friendly in your in your space is job one. 
So the first thing you got to do is you got to be able to define this, what this customer experience is for your company. What what do you want to have happen? Define right. it, describe it. Secondly, then you got to train it, or measure it, or practice it, or make sure the person you've hired knows what to do and have accountability around it. So not a punishment system, but a system of this is our strategy. We take it very seriously, and if you're not on board with this. Then we have to have a conversation. Well, that's right, and and measure it, and and have some ability to know whether or not it's happening. The accountability piece is important, and I'm just thinking of uh, my experience with uh, my airline of choice, which is Delta. <laughs> I know that when I call Delta and book something or whatever, because I have a loyalty preference with them, I get at the end of every call of talking to a live operator, they will say, "Please hold on for a 10 second survey." Yeah. And at the end of that call with, you know, whoever I spoke with, the survey is, what do you think about this person that just gave you service? Rank them from one to five, five being great, one being terrible. Yeah. What if every single interaction you ever had in your business, as soon as you interacted with them, they got to vote on how good you did? Yeah. So what I, what I appreciate about that for Delta is every one of their operators is getting rated by my opinion. With oh. nothing else other than my opinion of how they did. And it's not like you're being sent a survey like a day later or two days later. Hey, thanks for calling. How was your customer service experience on the phone with Delta? No, it's immediate. It's imme- Hey, that guy you just talked to, how, did he suck? How did he do? Yeah. <laughs> you know, what What was he like? Because we can fire him right now if that would make you happy, Delta. Yeah. Delta Platinum member or uh, whatever. Uh, Diamond? Diamond? There we Excuse go. Me. There we Pla- go. Please. Yeah. Platinum. Yeah. We're Are not peasants. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but that that says to me they care about it. They take the it degree. seriously. Yeah. yeah. So, so, th- so then uh, back to the you know the steps you must take. You must also then hire people that get it, hire people that want to do it, and and uh, compensate them and reward them appropriately for what you're showing is very important. If you're rewarding them with compensation and benefits and investment, yeah, that circle of life goes all the way around. Definitely. And and the guys that think about a a monthly review on any employee you have. Yeah. Hey, uh, your uh, your units per transaction is a little low this year, so we're going to address this and we're going to talk about it and and we're going to try to improve on it. Any business owner probably takes that number somewhat seriously, right? So why can't, hey, I saw uh, last week um, that customer... You know, you didn't give them more than one or two options, and they clearly kind of didn't seem very, uh, very excited about their option. They actually came back yesterday and returned their shoes. So, you know, let's kind of talk about this process. I didn't like the, what I saw, and these are kind of the standards we have for the, our shoe fitting experience. Well, you're onto something there, and that's really the consistency it takes, mm-hmm. which means someone has got their eye on this. Yeah, someone's paying attention to this without fail yeah at all hours of every day for every customer every single time exactly okay well listen this is a topic we're going to be talking about so i think this is a nice introduction any final thoughts from you before i hit end i think uh i think we covered it we got a, we got a good bit there beautiful yeah all right well you've been uh you've been on with mandatory listening and we look forward to hearing from you and uh and also talking to you next time that's it for this episode You can find Mandatory Listening on iTunes or wherever you get and subscribe to your podcasts. We'd love to hear what you think, so make sure and leave us comments on iTunes or on our website at mangroup.net, where you'll find all of our episodes. That's M-A-N-N group.net. Thanks for listening.